possible. I have the only key. I see. I must have been mistaken. Well, I won't delay you, Mrs. Martin said. Mother's filled out the form you sent her. She held out the Manlini Manila Manalia folder. She hopes it will be useful. I'm sure it will. Lockwood tucked it somewhere inside his coat. Thank you very much. We'd better get started. Tell your mother we'll be in touch in the morning. The woman handed him a ring of keys. Somewhere on the gro road, somewhere on the road, a car blared to be answered by another. There was plenty of time until curfew, but night was falling and people were growing angsty. They wanted to be home. Soon they'd be n there'd be nothing moving in London streets but trails of mist and twisting moonbeams, or nothing at least an adult any adults could see. Susie Martin was conscious of this too. She raised her shoulder, pulling her cardigan tight. Well, I'd better be going. I suppose I should wish you good luck. She looked away. So very young. How terrible that this world has come to this. Good night, Miss Martin, Lockwood said. Without a reply, she padded down the stores. In a few seconds, she vanishes among the mists and laurels in the direction of the road. She's not happy, I said. I think we'd be we'll be off the case tomorrow morning. Better get it solved tonight, then, Lockwood said. Ready? I padded the hilt of my rapier. Ready. He grinned at me, stepped up to the door, with a magician's flourish, turned the key in the lock. When entering a house occupied by a visitor, it's best to be getting quick. That's one of the first rules you learn. Never hesitate, never linger on the threshold. Why? Because for those few seconds, it's not too late. You stand there in the doorway with fresh air on your back and darkness up ahead, and you'd be an idiot if you didn't want to turn around and run. And as soon as you acknowledge that... Your willpower starts draining away through your boots, and the terror starts building in your chest, and bang! That's it. You've compromised before you've begun. Lockwood and I knew this, so we didn't hang around. We slipped straight through, putting down our bags, and shut the door softly behind us. Then we stood quietly still with our backs against it, watching and listening, side by side. The hall of the house lately occupied by Mr. and Mrs. Hope was long and relatively narrow. Through the high ceiling made it quite so, seem quite large, the fold was tiled in black and white marble squares set diagonally, and the walls were palely papered. Halfway along, a steep staircase rose in the shadows. The halls kinked around this to the left and continued into a void of darkness. Doors, doorways opened on either side, gaping and choked in the darkness. All of which could have been nicely illuminated if we turned on the lights, of course. And there was a switch on the wall right there, but we didn't attempt to use it. You see, a second rule you learn is this. Electric electricity interferes. It dulls the senses and makes you weak and stupid. It's much better to watch and listen in the dark. It's good to fe have that fear. We stood in silence doing what we do. I listened. Lockwood watched. It was cold in the house. The air had that musty, slightly sore smell you get in every unloved place. I leaned in close to Lockwood. No heating, I whispered. Mm-hmm. Something else, too, you think? Mm-hmm. As my eyes grew used to the dark, I saw more details. Beneath the curl of the banister was a small, a little polished table on which sat a china bowl of potpourri. There were pictures on the wall, mostly faded posters of old-time musicians and photographs of rolling hills and gentle seas. All pretty in Corys. In fact, it wasn't an ugly hallway. In bright sunlight, it would have looked quite pleasant. But not much now, when the last light from the door pan stretched out like skewed coffins on the door in front of us, and with our shoulder, ugh, with our shadows neatly framed inside another them, and with the manner of Miss Old Mister Hope's death in the place hanging heavy on our minds, I breathed hard to calm myself and shut out morbid morbid thoughts. Then I closed my eyes against the taunting darkness and listened, listened. Halls, landings, and staircase are arteries and airways of any building. It's here where everything gets channeled. Everything is channeled. You get echoes of things currently going on in all connecting places. Sometimes you get other noises, too, that streakly speeding ought to not be there at all. Echoes of the past, echoes of hidden things. This was one of such times. I opened my eyes picked up my bags, and walked slowly down the hall towards the stairs. Lockwood was already standing by the little polished table beneath the banister. His eyes, sh his face shone dimly in the light from the ta from the door. Heard something, he said? Yep. What? A little knocking sound. Comes and goes. It's very faint, and I can't tell where it's coming from, but it'll get stronger. It's scarily dark now. What about you? 
He pointed at the bottom of the step. You remember what happened to Mr. Hope, of course. Fell down the stairs and broke his neck. Exactly. Well, there's a tremendous resident death glow right here, still lingering three months after he died. I should have brought my sunglasses. It's so bright. So what Mr. Hope, Mrs. Hope told George on the phone stacks up. Her husband tripped and stumbled down and hit the ground hard. He glanced up the shadowy stairway. Long, steep flights. Nasty way to go. I bent low, squinting at the floor in the half-dark. Yeah, looks how the tiles are, have cracked. He must have fallen with tremendous fo- Two sharp crashes sounded on the stairs. Air moved violently against my face. Before I could react, something large, soft, and horribly heavy landed precisely where I stood. The impact of it jarred my teeth. I jumped back, ripping my raper from my belt. I stood against the wall, whip and raised and shaking, heart clawing at my chest, eyes shiring, eyes staring widely side to side. Nothing. The stairs were empty. No broken body sprawled lifeless on the floor. Lockwood leaned casually against the banister. It was too dark to be certain, but I swear he'd raised an eyebrow. He hadn't heard a thing. You all right, Lucy? I breathed hard. No, I just caught an echo of Mr. Hope's last fall. It was very loud and very real. It's like he landed right on top of me. Don't laugh, it's not funny. Sorry, well, something's stirring early tonight. It's going to get interesting later. What time is it? Having a watch with a little Lumia style is my third recommendation. recommended rule. It's best if it also can withstand sudden darps in temperature and strong ectoplasm shock. Not yet, Fa.